This is experiment 10, Colligative Properties of Solutions. Let's have a look at the pre-lab review page. Question number one, as always, deals with safety alerts. <clears throat> and there isn't much room uh, to answer question number one, and that's your first clue that there, there are none given. Question number two, disposal directions. As you read, look for the garbage can icons, and that will help you. Uh, number of questions here, I think they're pretty straightforward. Uh, here's a little tip for number nine. Uh, the answer is boiling chips are added. Boiling chips are little uh, stone pieces of stone that about the size of a pea, and, and uh, they serve as nucleation sites for the start of bubbles so that boiling uh, doesn't occur explosively, but sort of gently. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the data and report pages. Uh, in part A, you're looking at osmosis and osmotic pressure. Osmosis, as you know, is the flow of solvent, usually water, across a membrane. And uh, you'll be <clears throat> determining some masses uh, before soaking and after soaking. And you can read those photographs to the thousandth. So be sure and record those values to that accuracy. Uh, in the report part, uh, you'll be comparing the sample uh, and uh, seeing if uh, the sample changes in mass after sitting for a period of time in a surrounding liquid. And uh, the principle of osmosis is that water flows from a lower solute concentration into an area of higher solute concentration from the less concentrated into the more concentrated. And uh, if, uh, if it turns out that the dialysis tubing plus water has added mass, you would use a plus sign over here, the change in sample mass. If, it, if the sample weighs less, you use a negative sign. And the same for direction of solvent flow. If, if uh, solvent or water is flowing into the sample, use a plus. And the same system over here, a plus if it's flowing into the sample. Part B deals with freezing point depression. And again, you'll want to record masses to the thousandth, uh, temperatures to the tenth. And you'll be looking at two different solutions a sodium chloride solution and ethylene glycol solution. And one of the colligative properties of solutions is that when you make a, sol a solution, uh, the more concentrated the solution is, the lower the freezing point. So water, as you know, freeze, freezes at zero degrees centigrade. And what you'll find down here is that the freezing points of these solutions are below the freezing point of pure water. Or in other words, they're negative numbers. And uh, that's sort of important because over on this side, when you're doing the report and you calculate delta T sub F, uh, delta means the change, the change in the freezing point temperature. Uh, when you subtract, you'll get a positive number. So zero minus a minus would give you a positive number. So in, in these two spaces, you'll have positive numbers. Uh, solution molality, you'll record using three significant figures. And the case of F value, you'll have two significant figures there. So that should help you. Let me adjust that. Part C deals with boiling point elevation. So again, temperatures you'll want to record to the tenth. And uh, we're looking at two different solutes, sucrose, sugar, and ethylene glycol. Uh, the volume of water is measured using a graduated cylinder. So you'll want to record to the tenth. Uh, the mass, when you look at those photographs, you'll see that you can 
interpret the photos to the thousandth. So you want to be sure and do that. And the boiling point again of the solution is, uh, is expressed to the tenth. Whereas freezing points are depressed, boiling points are elevated when you measure solutions. Over here on the right hand side, the total mass, uh, uh, because you're converting this from the volume of water used, you'll only be able to get values to the tenth. Uh, however, this mass of solute, you're using the balances, and you can measure those to the thousandth moles of solute. You'd have three significant figures, and then be sure and track significant figures as you go down through that calculation. So a lot of calculations in the experiment, but they're not too bad. That brings us to the questions at the end of the chapter. They're based upon the experiments that you've done. And I'll give you a little clue for number three. It, the answer is B. And I'd like you to tell me why. And that concludes the experiment. So I hope you have fun. Remember to send me an email if I can be of help. And do the lab ahead of time so that we have time to exchange emails before the due date.